In many areas of technology, high demands are placed on the materials used, for example in aviation technology. For example, turbine blades and jet engines are not only exposed to very high mechanical but also thermal loads. Simple metals often do not meet these requirements. Therefore, several metals are usually melted together in order to obtain completely new properties after solidification. Such mixtures of two or more metals are also called alloys. Chemically speaking, alloys are thus characterized by their typical metal bonds. So note, mixtures of substances with metallic characteristics are called alloys. In order to be able to specifically influence the desired material properties, profound knowledge of the formation of alloys of metals is required. This video will therefore give a brief overview of the different types of alloys. In further videos, the different types of alloys will be presented in detail. Due to the complexity, only alloys consisting of two different substances are considered. Such alloys are also called binary systems. The total of the possible mixing concentrations of a two-component alloy is also known as the alloy system. Alloys are usually produced by melting the two components and then solidifying. For this purpose, a certain amount of an alloying element, also called a solute, is added in the liquid state to a host substance, also called a solvent. Since the atoms of the substances involved are only weakly bonded to each other in the liquid state, they can generally be mixed relatively well. During solidification, this solubility can either be completely retained or completely lost. Partial solubility may also occur during solidification. Depending on the solubility of the two components in the solid state, alloys can be divided into three different types. These will be discussed in the following in more detail. Let us first consider alloys that are completely miscible in the solid state. This means that the two components of an alloy can be completely dissolved in each other in the solid state. In this case, the atoms of the alloying component are completely incorporated into the host lattice of the base substance. The different atoms then form a common lattice structure. Such a mixed atomic crystal structure is called a solid solution. So note, complete solubility of the alloying elements in the solid state is called a solid solution. Figuratively speaking, the components of a solid solution behave like a mixture of water and alcohol, where the alcohol molecules can also be completely dissolved in the water. In principle, the alloy element atoms in a solid solution can incorporate into the host lattice of the base material in two different ways during crystallization. In this respect, a distinction is made between substitutional solid solutions and interstitial solid solutions. These two types of solid solution are explained in more detail in the following. If the atoms of the alloying element occupy regular lattice sites in the host lattice during crystallization, this is referred to as a substitutional solid solution. Comparison of the host lattice before melting and the common crystal lattice after solidification shows that individual host atoms have just been replaced by atoms of the alloying elements. In general, the two alloy components have different atomic radii and chemical properties. Therefore, in reality, a lattice distortion occurs within the crystals. The lattice distortion increases with the number of atoms substituted and eventually results in the base atoms not being able to be replaced indefinitely by the alloying atoms. The solubility of the alloying element in the base material is therefore usually limited. Thus, it is only a partial solubility of the components. Only under the following three conditions is the solubility of the two substances unlimited over the entire mixing range. First, the substances must have the same lattice type. Second, the components must have similar atomic radii. As a guideline, the atomic radii should not differ by more than 15%. Third, the substances must have similar chemical properties. These conditions are also known as the hume rothery rules. Only under these conditions can the atoms of the alloying elements occupy the regular lattice sites of the host lattice unnoticed, so to speak. Ultimately, any alloy concentration can be produced with such a substitutional solid solution without a so-called miscibility gap. Such a solubility over the whole mixing range is also called a complete solid solution series. This means that the components are completely soluble in the solid state. The copper-nickel alloy system, for example, forms such a complete solid solution series. If the atoms of the alloying element are relatively small compared to the atoms of the base metal, there is another way in which the atoms can be arranged in the lattice. Because of their small size, the atoms of the alloying elements can also be incorporated on interstitial sites. Such a mixture of atoms at interstitial sites is also known as an interstitial solid solution. 
Since the atoms of the alloying elements can only occupy interstitial sites, complete solubility is only given in a very limited concentration range. This is usually only a few percent. When alloying beyond the solubility limit, the excess alloying element atoms precipitate out of the lattice and form their own crystal in the microstructure. This crystal may in turn contain some atoms of the base material. Therefore, only partial solubility of the components in the solid state is obtained for interstitial solid solutions. In addition to total and partial solubility, there are alloys whose components are insoluble in the solid state. Although the components initially mix in the liquid state, they segregate during solidification. If the conditions for the formation of a solid solution are not met, the alloy atoms may not be able to occupy regular lattice sites or interstitial sites. This is the case, for example, when the alloying element has a different lattice type to the base material or when the components have very different chemical properties. The atoms are then displaced from the other lattice structure during solidification and forced to form their own pure crystals. Each component forms its own crystal structure, so that there are no alloying element atoms in the lattice of the base material and no atoms of the base material in the lattice of the alloying component. There is therefore complete insolubility of the components in the solid state. The microstructure consists of a mixture of completely different crystals. So note, if the components of an alloy are insoluble in the solid state, each component will form its own crystal structure. Figuratively speaking, the components of such an alloy behave like a mixture of water and oil, neither of which can be mixed, neither the water molecules in oil nor the oil molecules in water. It should be noted that although the atoms of a mixed crystal alloy do not arrange themselves in a common lattice structure, this does not necessarily mean that such alloys are less mechanically stable than a solid solution alloy. Very strong interatomic forces also act between the pure crystals of a mixed crystal alloy to ensure cohesion. In reality, however, there is no such thing as complete insolubility of the components, since the components can always be mixed to some extent. In the case of the bismuth-cadmium alloy system, for example, the solubility is so low that, for the sake of simplicity, it can be assumed that the components are completely insoluble in the solid state. Perfect solubility or perfect insolubility of the components are ultimately only special cases of alloy types. In general, the components are neither perfectly miscible nor immiscible. In practice, an alloy component is always soluble to some extent in the base material and vice versa. In general, there is always a limited solubility of the components in the solid state. The partial solubility can be compared figuratively to a water-sugar mixture, where the solubility of the sugar in water is also limited. The water can only dissolve the sugar to a certain extent, and the undissolved sugar eventually settles. The lattice structure of the base material therefore also contains some alloying element atoms. Depending on their chemical properties, the alloying element atoms can either occupy regular lattice sites in the base material or be intercalated in interstitial sites. This is known as either a substitutional or an interstitial solid solution. Such a solid solution, consisting mainly of the base material with only small amounts of alloying element atoms, is also called an alpha solid solution. Conversely, in the case of very high concentrations of alloying element atoms, the structure consists mainly of the lattice structure of the alloying element, with small amounts of atoms of the base material embedded in it. This is known as a beta solid solution. Let us summarize the three types of alloys. If the components are completely soluble in each other in the solid state, it is called a solid solution alloy. The different atoms are usually homogeneously distributed throughout the grains. If the components are completely insoluble in each other in the solid state, it is called a mixed crystal alloy. The components each form their own crystals or grains in the microstructure, whose atoms do not mix. The microstructure is inhomogeneous. If the components are only partially soluble in each other in the solid state, the microstructure is a mixture of different solid solutions. The alpha solid solution consists mainly of the base material, in whose lattice structure the atoms of the alloying elements are embedded. The beta solid solution consists mainly of the atoms of the alloying element, which in turn may contain atoms of the base material.